Over the past five plus years now, can you believe that? Five plus years now. Some of you have taken to the comment section of my videos at times and social media and accused me of enjoying being negative for the sake of being negative. And then I just want to be negative about the WWE. And frankly, if I may be so honest, if I truly wanted to just be negative about the WWE, I'd go a hell of a lot more all in and balls deep on it than I actually do. Best believe that plays. And also, I get many of you that will say that I'll complain about the things that are bad and won't offer any solutions, even though I think consistently, even in the videos where in the moments where I'm complaining about something, I provide alternatives and I provide what I feel to be solutions. But hey, you don't actually listen to what's said in the videos. Eh, what does it matter, I guess? Uh, but most of all, a lot of you just sit there and think that maybe wrestling has passed me by and I just don't enjoy it, so why should I continue watching it? And I don't know what I want. And you know what? That's not the worst criticism in the world. It's not exactly unfounded. Because at times, I don't know if I'm sure if I know what I want from professional wrestling, in particular the WWE. And frankly, I don't know if you do either. So I decided to kick off this new year by making what I want more known. Trying to be a little more positive here, or at least trying to more eloquently lay out what it is that I'm exactly looking for in the year to come. So here it is, as you can see in the bloody title, What I Want from WWE in 2016. Now here are some very pressing, important things that to me have to, have to, have to be addressed. When it comes to John Cena, once and for all, We've got to figure out why all of a sudden there's this big push to make him the crappiest morning show host this side of Michael Strahan. I don't get it. I don't know, and I don't understand it. And I'd like to know more, more, more. I'd also like to dig a little deeper and have the WWE explain his fetishes for kissing babies and hugging fat girls. And once and for all, I would like to know why... He's been the top guy for over a decade, yet his Jort Johnson just doesn't seem to measure up. And speaking of measuring up, if a tree falls in the woods and nobody's around to hear it, will Randy Orton still take a dump in a diva's bag? You know, when it comes to Randy Orton, after all of these years, I'm left wondering, when he craps in a diva's bag, does it leave a baby oil residue, a baby oil film. Does he get scruffs and tufts of hair from his construction worker beard all over the place, leaving evidence at the crime scene that the WWE quickly sweeps under the mat? I don't know. And will we ever find out the answer to one of those eternal life questions? Why this guy still gets pushed after over a decade when he can't talk on the mic? And what makes the raging ring boner tick? And how is he able to find microscopic-sized gopher holes that aren't even visible by the naked eye in the mat? That's what we want to know. What do we want from Seamus? You know what I want from Seamus? I want an entire flip and change in character. I want his name to become Potatoes O'Brien, goddammit. You want to go Irish? You want to get nuts? Let's get nuts. Well, let's call him freaking Potatoes O'Brien. Instead of potatoing people, he's going to hash brown people. His frickin' finishing maneuver might be the sweet potato. How oh, hell, I don't know. You could sit there and have him talking about the Lucky Charms. to get a Lucky Charm tramp stamp tattooed on his back right above his ass crack. I don't know. But most importantly of all, if we switch it to Potatoes O'Brien, the WWE can pick up a key advertising segment from Orida. They've been missing out on that Orida money for years. For years. And here is a clear and present opportunity to pick some of that up. And you've got to pounce, you've got to strike, and you got to do it now, fella. And let's look at Shawn Michaels. After all of these years, I'm still wondering how Shawn Michaels made a fucking ginger kid. And then on top of that, was able to make a son, which is something that nobody else in the damn breakfast club has been able to do. It makes me wonder, is the son actually Kevin Nash's? Is it Scott Hall's? Because the clique could make sons. The Breakfast Club can't. 
So how the hell did Shawn Michaels make a son and on top of that make a ginger damn kid too? And then when it comes to Triple H, we need to once and for all delve into the mystery of what makes him tick and what makes him God and how can he be God and have three books written about him, The Hunter, The Hearst, and The Helmsley. And all of these years later, he still can't make a son. He's 0 for 3 in the son department. Why should we continue to call him God if he can't make a son? Now granted, the son of a bitch is incredibly skillful every year, even if he's not a full-time in-ring competitor and making sure he gets himself one of the marquee WrestleMania matches. And that is godlike in its ability in and of itself. But we need more validation for why this man should actually be referred to as God. When it comes to Roman Reigns, shit, Star Wars The Force Awakens, I just went and saw it, had an okay time watching it too. Yo, know, why doesn't the WWE tie into something that is very big in pop culture? Why can't we acknowledge once and for all that Roman Reigns is Kevin Nash's, Diesel's, Samoan son? And why can't we have this eternal battle between the dark side of the force and the light side of the force. And Diesel is the dark side. And Roman Reigns is the light side. And instead of having fucking lightsaber fights, we have hair flip contests and slow walks down to the fucking ring. If we want to be relevant, and if we want to see WWE be hip again and cool again, that's the type of shit we need to see. And maybe Test comes back Obi-Wan style from beyond the fucking grave. To give some advice to Roman Reigns. I don't know, I'm just saying. Maybe once and for all, we get some confirmation that Dean Ambrose is indeed the comb forward king and not only a client, but a new president of the Hair Club for Men. Maybe we could get Kevin Owens to sit there and instead of being whatever the fuck he's supposed to be, is just be a true blooded Canadian walking fucking stereotype with a lumberjack hat and beard, with a fucking denim tuxedo that's covering a flannel shirt. Why can't he be walking out in freaking lumberjack boots and saying A and hoser and eating sausages and drinking fucking beer, so drinking some Molson or Labatt or whatever the fuck Canadians drink? And why doesn't Kevin Owens come out and cut 15-minute promos about curling? Now, you want a guy that's fucking going to be relevant and get over in today's WWE? Have Kevin Owens talk about fucking curling. Why don't we have Neville actually do something? Do something. I don't know, call him fucking Captain Keebler. And he his new finishing move is the EL fudge. I don't fucking know. Do something with him. And how about Dolph Ziggler just fucks off and goes away? <laughs> all right. All right. All right. God, he's just trying to have a little fun here. You need to have a little more fun with professional wrestling. And I know I most certainly want to have more fun with the WWE in 2016. So there was a little stab at it. I took a stab at it like OJ would white people. So, now we got through some of that. Even though some of that shit I legitimately would like to see addressed in the WWE in 2016. I need it, I want it, and I have to have it. And I need more. More! More! Let's talk about some of the other things that I want this company to actually bother to give me this upcoming year. In terms of characters. You know, I'd like to have some characters with some purpose and some meaning. I'd like to have some characters that are unique and interesting. So many of these characters are boring as bricks. You don't know what makes them tick, and even if you do, you don't fucking care. There's no reason to get emotionally invested in these guys. There's no reason to really care about these guys. I'd like for that to change. Even if it was just one guy that I could really get behind. Even if it was just one guy that I really got emotionally invested in. That would be such an improvement over the WWE of recent years. Part of the reason I haven't enjoyed this product as much over the past five, six, seven years is because I haven't had that one guy or a guy at all, period. It'd be nice to recapture that again. And it'd be nice for the WWE to give me somebody that I could get behind like that again. You know, and one way to help that happen would be storylines. Give me some storylines that actually matter and make some damn sense. You know, you've got all week to write a Raw show. And yeah, granted, it's a three-hour show, but you've still got all fucking week to write it. It can't possibly be that difficult. How about giving me some storylines that actually matter that actually makes some sense. 
Give me some storylines that actually bother to, oh, I don't know, tell a fucking story. And an interesting and compelling and sometimes maybe even a different one than the same old watered-down corporate BS we've gotten from this WWE PG era. How about some storylines that just don't suck? Many of the top storylines in 2015 WWE just sucked. Flat out. Don't even need to quantify it or make tangible the level of the suck or how they sucked. We just know it. We see it. We sense it. We felt it. Okay, they sucked. It would be nice to instead have some storylines that had good build, that had some good storyline arcs, that featured some good character development, that had some nice twists and turns, and ultimately, most of all, didn't feel like a waste of time and gave you some type of fulfilling, satisfying payoff when they were over. I don't think that's too much to ask. In terms of the actual in-ring action, I'd like to see fewer random matches, just people thrown together for the fuck all of it, I'd in particular like to see fewer repeat matches, especially if you have two people face off several times in different capacities and different formats on Raw and SmackDown. You know, when, by the time they actually face off at the pay-per-view, it doesn't feel like it's as big of a deal. It's not as special. Fewer repeat matches would be nice, especially if I do tune in to watch a pay-per-view one night and the next night I'm basically watching the same night again on damn Raw. Fewer repeat matches. And, and frankly, when it comes to Raw, just fewer matches, period. For some of you, you say, oh, this is stupid. That's a freaking wrestling company. They should have more wrestling. Did you ever think that with all the wrestling that they have, that that it hasn't in some way at least contributed to the suck that is the current WWE product by and large? Is there any thought to the fact that the WWE is ultimately not a wrestling company? They are a sports entertainment company, and they're not even sports entertaining. They're just making crappy, watered-down, highly produced independent professional wrestling. If I want to watch independent professional wrestling and watch a certain style and I just want to watch nothing but matches and have nothing else to stimulate me, nothing else, then I'll go watch ROH. I'll go watch TNA. Now, TNA at least tries with their pathetic storyline. I'll go watch an ROH, though, or I'll go watch this fucking independent company or that independent company. No, we need fewer matches, not more of them. So that way, when there are matches, there could be some type of story, some type of purpose to them. And when the matches actually happen, they mean something. Having too many matches waters down everything, especially when you get to the pay-per-view and you're expecting me to sit down and basically watch three hours of nothing but fucking matches when every week when I tune in to watch Raw, I'm basically just getting that. Two other segments, and then the rest of the show is fucking crappy, mediocre wrestling. That's enough. All these wrestling-obsessed nerds that want to sit there and see people grab and touch each other and slam each other to the ground all sexy like for three hours, need to fucking go. The WWE is at its best when it's a hybrid, when it's about characters and stories and interesting, compelling moments and shocking moments. And then you build that around in part the action that actually does happen in the ring, but that's a part of it. It doesn't become the entire fucking pie. It's just a piece of it. A healthy, sizable piece of it, but it's a piece of it. It's just become too much of the damn pie now. I want this company to get the Royal Rumble right. Frankly, when's the last time they really, truly got the Royal Rumble winner right? Maybe 2012 with Sheamus? Maybe. But the last two, three years with the Royal Rumble, John Cena? Ugh. You know, did they really get that one right? Batista? Ugh. And Roman Reigns? Ugh. You know, can they get the Royal Rumble right this year? I want WrestleMania 32 to kick ass. Now, it's about time that this company, to me, delivers a really kick-ass WrestleMania. It's been years since they've truly delivered a kick-ass WrestleMania. They've had a couple of good ones, but I want a really kick-ass WrestleMania. If you're trying to sit there and draw 100,000-plus people to AT&T Stadium for WrestleMania 32, then why not give us a show that feels like it deserved to have that many people show up to actually fucking watch it? You know what else I'd like? I'd like for Raws not to suck most weeks and not feel like a gaping void of three hours of my Monday night every single week that I can never get back. Because time is the most precious commodity that we have, and I'd like to feel like I didn't waste it every single Monday night watching this shit for three hours. I'd also like some pay-per-views that actually feel like the special events that they're supposed to be. I don't want to sit there and see the matches given away before the pay-per-view. I don't want to see the matches be repeated the night after the goddamn pay-per-view. Let's make some of these pay-per-views actually feel like they matter, feel like they're significant, feel ultimately like they're special. And at the end of the day, above all else, no matter what, the one thing that's missing for me from the WWE and the one thing that I want them to give me in 2016 is I want them to be fun again. 
You know, for years to me, when the WWE's been good, it's been fun. But sometimes with some of the dumb shit they did, or when they were bad, at times, yes, it could be even more fun. But now they've transcended to a level that most nothing that they do is any fun at all. You know, at the end of the day, it's basically a bunch of half-naked men groping each other and grabbing each other and slamming each other viciously to the ground. We shouldn't take wrestling too, too seriously. So why not have some fun with it? And why not do a little bit more to make the fucking WWE a little bit more fun? If there is one thing above all else, and I don't care what they do to get there, I don't care how they get there, I just want them to make it fun for me to be a WWE fan again. It's that simple. It's that simple. Yeehaw!